This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, I'm Sabrina Brown. It's great to have you with us. Topping the news tonight, the Minister of Immigration meeting with stakeholders on Grand Bahama in a closed meeting today to discuss issues related to immigration and the island's workforce. Following that meeting, Minister Fred Mitchell spoke with members of the press. Shashina Roll reports. Government officials say it was an open and frank discussion with the industrial sector. Representation from various government ministries, including the Department of Labor and Immigration, attended the meeting. The Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Dr. Michael Darvel, says some of the new policies implemented by the Department of Immigration and the importance of training were on the agenda. While initiating the policies, uh, we think that there may have been a misunderstanding between the industrial sector and the government. And this meeting was to clarify a lot of the misconceptions that are out there and to hear what their concerns are so that we can do a better job as government to expedite the processing of their applications for employment as well as their labor certificates and uh, the issuing of immigration certificates here on the island. But ultimately, uh, the whole concept is to ensure that uh, the industrial sector understand the importance of training and to help the government to prepare our local workforce to capitalize uh, on the, the new uh, uh, job opportunities that will come. Minister for Immigration Fred Mitchell says if Grand Bahama is to progress, dialogue with the private sector must continue. There's no question that we have a pledge uh, in the immigration sector of trying to put Bahamians first so that the first call on the economic resources of the country, um, that call comes to, for, from Bahamians, and that that call is answered in their favor. And um, I think that the sector appreciates that, and there was a frank exchange of views about how we deal with uh, some of the issues of training and preparing the workforce for the challenges of uh, Grand Bahama and its economy. President of the Chamber of Commerce and representative of the industrial sector, Barry Malcolm, says the meeting stressed the importance of partnership between the two entities. This is and should be the first of an ongoing process through which uh, the in industry uh, comes to understand more fully the, the, the issues and concerns that drives government policy and also that, so that um, uh, government uh, policy can be informed by the issues that, that drive and are important to business. Shashina Roll, ZNS Network News. The Grand Bahama Port Authority announcing that a new roundabout is under construction at West Atlantic Drive. Earlier this year, residents called for better traffic management at the busy intersection in the area of Freeport Bible Church. And while a temporary left-only turn was put in place, City Manager Troy McIntosh says a permanent solution is now in the works. Police have been having a lot of incidents, fender benders, and so we had something temporary in place. place until we've gotten approved budget. Now we've done that, we've commenced, pretty much almost finished the completion of the circle. Um, initially, from what we had there, we did get a lot of complaints, but the whole idea was safety. We wanted to reduce those uh, incidents that were occurring, and so we needed to do some immediately. And um, we got complaints, but we said to persons, be patient, you know, it's only a temporary solution. The roundabout was under construction for about four weeks and the city manager is asking residents to pay attention when using this new intersection. Just we asking persons to use the, the rules of the roundabout, which is the giveaway principle um, or yield principle. Persons who are in the circle has the right of way and to drive with due care and attention. You know, we realize that a lot of persons are texting, they're not paying attention and we're still finding fender benders at all of our circles and it shouldn't occur if they're using it properly. International criminal networks said to be infiltrating some Caribbean countries, including the Bahamas. That was one of the issues addressed during a recent security conference here on Grand Bahama. Joan Davis Roll has that story. Jamaica's Minister of National Security, the Honorable Peter Bunting, says as crime in some countries continues to spiral, a criminal network has been identified involving the Bahamas and other Caribbean countries. Illicit trade route that goes from Jamaica to Haiti to the Bahamas and on to Florida. 
or at least that's what my um, intelligence professionals tell me. And therefore, it really brings home. And that route, it's an illicit route, so it can smuggle humans, can smuggle drugs, smuggles guns, but it also tells you it has the same potential for being exploited by terrorist um, operators. The security minister also noted the similarities shared among CARICOM countries, and it also involves another unsavory criminal link. I happened last year to meet a former chairman of the uh, Bahamian Police Association who was in Jamaica attending the uh, Police Federation Conference. And I was having lunch with him and we were chatting and comparing notes, so to speak, of the challenges um, of preventing crime and violence in, in our respective countries. And he was speaking about the problem of criminal gangs. And I asked, so, you know, give me a, an example of, of some of the more troublesome gangs and names that you have in the Bahamas. He said, first name he said was the One Order Gang. <laughs> At which time I'm a little embarrassed to divert the, 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 the subject and the conversation. The reason Minister Bunting says he was embarrassed because that is a Jamaican gang. Banting says, much to his dismay, it was discovered that there was a Caribbean connection regarding the recent mall massacre in Nairobi, Africa. I read on in the story and it, they're talking about a role for Samantha Luthwit, uh, referred to as the White Widow. And they go on to speak that this White Widow character was allegedly radicalized by Abdullah El Faisal who happens to be, um, you know, a citizen of Jamaica and resident there now. Joan Davis Roll, Southern as Network News. Stay with us, the Bahamas and I Northern Edition is coming right back. Bringing news that matters to you. You're watching the Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition. Welcome back. This is World Mental Health Day and the Grand Bahama Health Services, along with the Pilot Club of Lukaya and the Cleveland Clinic, joined forces to celebrate this observance with a special luncheon at the Ruby Swiss Restaurant. A cross-sector of the community gathered to learn more about mental illnesses that affect older adults. Guest speaker Dr. Erwin Lucias, a geriatrician from the Cleveland Clinic in Florida, says greater emphasis needs to be placed on creating awareness about mental health in older people. It's very rampant. Depression, anxiety, sleep disorder, dementia. It's, it's very common. He says Alzheimer's is the number one cause of dementia. Withdrawal and behavioral changes are just some of the signs of the disease, which Dr. Lucius believes is often underdiagnosed. We tend to think, oh, it's just mom, dad, growing old, okay? You know, they're not really hurting us. They're not really uh, causing any problems. So, Long and behold, they've been suffering from Alzheimer's dementia and had they, you know, been seen by their physician earlier, they may have been able to do something and prevent the uh, progression. While Alzheimer's is a progressive condition, the medical expert says the process is gradual and early detection can lead to a more functional and improved quality of life. Dr. Lucia says there also needs to be a focus on caregivers of dementia patients. Offering them some type of treatment, uh, counseling, education, it makes it easier for the caregiver to understand the process because sometimes they're dealing with this on a daily basis, 24-7, and they don't understand what's going on. More often than not, they, they bicker with the patient. They, they may not totally comprehend the patient, and this may lead to even elderly abuse. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. 
The curator at Florida Museum of Natural History says research in Bahamian blue holes has uncovered fossils that provide evidence that a number of different species, like the Cuban crocodile and the now extinct land turtoise, once inhabited the Bahamas. They say changes to the blue holes, changes in plant and animal life, and the current size of the islands in the Bahamas are all a result of changes in sea level. Researchers say the islands are the smallest they've been in recent years because the temperature is the warmest it's ever been. Blue holes, they say, are an excellent research point because the chemistry of the water preserves plants and animals extremely well. Though the research focused on Abaco, the presenters noted that Grand Bahama probably has similar biodiversity as they are both on the Little Bahama Bank. In other news, the Ministry of Education's Careers Awareness Campaign is officially underway under the theme Transforming Mindsets, Embracing Opportunities to Financial Empowerment. Yesterday, students were admonished to follow their passion when considering a career. Natalie Martinborough has more. Coordinator and clinical psychologist at the Ministry of Education, Dr. Pamela Mills, says they are encouraging students to think outside of the box when it comes to choosing a career. The exhibit and opening ceremony focused on careers that are available in the job market as sixth graders may overlook. We know that the doctors and the lawyers and teachers and all are important, but we want them to look at the barbers and we want them to take a look at plumbing, welding and some of the other industrious uh, careers that we have around. The emphasis is to look at careers that are present in our community now and um, some of the things that they can do once they're done with school. The exhibition at the Jack Hayward Gym showcased barbers, medical technicians, and law enforcement officers. Guest speaker reporter Megan Shepard challenged students to choose a career based on their passion in life. I want everyone to go home tonight and think of three or four things that you absolutely love to do. Make a list and think, how can I put these three or four things together that I love? And how can I make a career of it? And if you can't think of the specific name of the thing that you want to be when you grow up, it's okay. Just ask an adult and say, these are the things I love to do. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. This is what I want to get paid to do for the rest of my life. And say, what is that profession called? And that's how I want you to find your passion. Think of the three or four things that you love doing the most. And say, this is my passion. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. The eager students have already gotten the ball rolling and they say they all want to be in various fields that are geared toward making a better community. I want to be a doctor because I just love helping people. I want to be a police to catch criminals, to help them, to help the country. I want to be a teacher so that I can teach people new things. I want to be a police because if anybody breaks the law, I'll catch them. I want to be a teacher because it helps people and it's what I love. I want to be a lawyer because I love to read and I like to write cases. I want to be a doctor because I like to help people. I want to be a banker because I want to learn how to do best in my job. I want to be a designer because I, I want people to look fashionable. So look out for these future leaders of tomorrow. Natalie Martinborough, ZNS Network News. Thank you, Natalie. Don't go away. Ricardo Lightborn is up next with sports. Everybody, it's sports time. I'm Ricardo Lightborn, and Ellie Zababa, Jay Johnson says Lee Natty is going to be going to Spanish Wells this weekend, and he will sail for Upper and Lower Bogue, and also should be a pretty good one in North Ilotra Regatta. I don't know, Baba J talking smack, so you guys better get ready for this. The Grand Bob Amateur Softball Association Championship continued last night at the Plex. The ladies were on the diamond first. The HTC Bobcats in the portside Jets crossed the line in game for the women's series and the Jets sitting on a three-game advantage. The Bobcats' Carolyn Lang got the start and playing for their life in the series. Tara Evans in the box, trying to put pressure on the Flyers with a shot to right center field. It goes to the fence and a triple. That would be short-lived. Tara would die on third on the out. The championship trophies on display is something in the air for game four. A defensive game in the early innings on both sides. The Flyers then turned a page on the Bobcats with his blue base hit. The run will score and a 6-1 lead. 
Narissa came into the game for Latoya Martin and brought the heat and the win. 6-1 of final portside Flyers with the Bobcats and they've got a trip to the BSF Nationals. Congrats to the Flyers. They are the Grand Bahama Ladies Champions. The Elnet Eliminators and the DEL Freighters also in Game 3 of the Men's Series. Eddie the Heat Basel wasted little time with the Freighters. 4-0 to score with the Heat striking out 14 batters. The loss to Quinton Cooper. Elnet up 3. Game 4 set for Friday. Yep, it's over Friday. Bombers Dodds Federation World Cup team is back home from St. John's, Newfoundland in Canada. Uh, 16th place finish for them. Our team was uh, basically a pretty good one. And that was a Robin Albury, Wayne Fish Copeland, Anderson Lewis, Faith uh, Sawyer, Liz, Cameron Sharks meeting Sky Bain. And Kevin Hicks was the manager and the coach and the Keisha Life one. Welcome home, kids. You guys did a very good job for us as well. Well, also, let me tell you, Grandma Dot Association did in turn uh, open. It's going to open the season pretty soon. And guess what? They are ready to rock and roll. They gave us the 411 on Tuesday night. The Grand Bomber Dots Association captains meeting at the Grand Bomber Tennis and Squash Club was informative. The intent is to get the season underway. The response to the meeting was very positive. It's going to be a team effort, says new president Anishka Maycock, and her executive team is on board. The start of the season, she says, is right around the corner. We're going to be open on Tuesday, the 15th of October, 2013, at 8.30 p.m. to all venues that are sponsoring, including the Grand Bahamas Tennis and Squash Club. The GB Tennis and Squash Club will be the home for the GBDA and for good reason. For 20 plus years, the GBA Tennis Squash Club has been our dedicated sponsor, which I mean non-breaking when it came to the financial backing of the Dart Association. They've been here for 20 plus years and we just want to say thank you because both of our uh, associations are non-profit organizations and every time there's a function, fundraiser and we come here, when everybody doors close, they're open to us and we just want to say thank you. Cheryl Tracy says the Grand Palmer Tennis and Squash Club is a family facility. We enjoy having them here because every little bit helps. Um, getting to know all the people because every year it changes, have different members and our members are just happy to have them. Stacey Knowles is the Vice President, Lillian Forbes will serve as the Secretary, Treasurer Stanley Wagos, Wayne Fish Copeland will handle the stats, Maria Thompson responsible for PR, and Charlene Grant is in charge of fundraising. And I'll tell you, don't forget, Baba J says, Lady Red leaving tomorrow morning to go to Bryland for the regatta. You guys are on your own. That's Sports Tonight.